recording cool welcome everybody this is the hands-on session for the advanced imaging application on cvl presented um to you by um uh, yushi chen susan maliki dr chow Su from monash university and we have um jay and philip on board to help you with the technical um part okay so i might just start um presentation with acknowledging um the traditional owners and their custodianship of the lands on which we meet we pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual uh, connections to country we recognize their valuable contributions um, to australia and global society uh, i might just um, hand over to dr chow su to uh, introduce all the speakers and uh, start his presentation hand over to you dr chow yep thanks sarah um thank you for the introduction so yeah so this is the outline so of today so hands-on workshop so it's a follow-up of the work of the webinar from last week um as we described it before um so today we're going to actually get everyone's under cbls we prepare the data we prepare the script um, and then hopefully people can get really hands-on um, start to step by step guide through all of this analysis we're not doing the completely full one but we definitely get a fraction of that that let people have a feelings of how uh, easy is and then um, uh, uh, quickly that you can get to your data analysis on the CBO um, uh, massive platform. So we are gonna start first with the introduction and some housekeeping work. So mainly just want to get everyone's uh, logged on to massive, uh, especially for those people who today is their first time to log on to massive. Um, so we have uh, uh, Jay and Philip here to help us for the first five or six minutes. So make sure that everyone can log on. I'll, I'll guide you through that do it step by step, step together. Uh, if we still have a problem, so I will put a Zoom room and I'll put a Zoom link downstairs, uh, down in the chat, so you can log out and log go into that rooms. Um, Jay or Philip will wait there to help you to log on, uh, massive, make everything's working, and then you can come back to keep going to the uh, the following sessions. Um, but it's fine if you said I I, I don't really I don't have a computer handy I don't want you to log on that's totally fine I'm happy for you just to follow that with us step by step because all of the uh, the session will be recorded and also the slides is all on CVL at Massive so later you can log on and then put that and have a look so it's also you can follow that step by step using the slide to do it anytime uh, later so there will be three sessions that very um, corresponding to the three sessions, three topics that we did last uh, last week. The first one, uh, Uchi, who is a, I'll just do a quick bow. Uchi is a PhD student at uh, Monash University. So he's uh, really working on the advanced structure imaging analysis, like using eco mode. So uh, I don't have your bio, but yeah, he's had a, a lot of works on that, are very familiar with the CVL, and they get a lot of papers published um, in eLife uh, and then some other journals. Um, so he will guide us through that, that what Kevin has delivered a talk before to some eager mode analysis. And the followed by Susan, who is a PhD, senior PhD student at uh, Brain Park at Monash as well. So she has been extensive uh, experience on working with CTI data and the MTR data. So she's um, uh, very knowledgeable so on all of the pipelines. Yeah. And then it's going to help us with the, um, the structure connectivity, which is a DTI based connectome analysis. Uh, and after that, uh, we go through the resting state part of the fun resting state function connectivity part of the hands on sessions, mainly followed what Hannah was presented last week, how to use contour box to do some basic function connectivity analysis. Um, yes, so if you have the questions, anything, feel free just to type in the question and the comments in the webinar chat so we can uh, quickly communicate. All right, so first is the housekeeping. Uh, how do we log on to Massive? Especially, this is slightly different, especially you have Massive, you log on to Massive before. Um, it, there's, it's totally fine uh, which account it is, but if this is your 
if you find it difficult to reserve a session now, we'll come to here. There's an advanced setting that we have the nodes already reserved for everyone. So we should be able to get on it soon. Okay, so I'm going to do that with everyone. So let me, actually, let me start from very, very beginning. I just want to cancel my sessions. Log out. Okay, all right. So if you type in beta.cloud.cvo.au and you will end up with this login portal and then choose CVO and click login. And then you will come to the second window so showing which one you are going to uh, select the authentication method. So if you have if you provided your Monash, uh, sorry, your institutional email address, you're going to here. And if that the uh, personal Gmail, you come to here. So for example, my session is linked with my Monash. Oh, yeah, it's it's already logged in. So if My, my in the incognito mode, what I'm going to do is, is mm. here and there's uh, so a one ash minus two. Okay, authentications. Yep. And you will get onto uh, this interface. Um, apparently I have uh, some other things here. Yours is much more simpler than me. Uh, and you can go to the desktop desktop tab. And if you pause down here, I just want to know whether everyone just followed up all the way to here. Uh, please give me uh, any confirmations that you like. So I want this session to be more interactive. So if you get any problems, please stop anytime. Uh, so if you want, when I ask you whether people finish that, uh, if you could put a, a thumbs up or any, yeah, yeah, just type in there. Actually, I actually can't see the emoji. And yeah, probably has to do a thumbs up, uh, do some thumbs up in the chat. I've entered all the advanced settings, but I get yeah, error and I've been able to. All right, let's try that. I'm not sure, Catherine, I had the similar problem today for very similar like yours. And I, I believe there's a typos uh, and I fix it. So if everyone's come to here, then that's to select a T, uh, single T4. Um, and then for now, let's say four hours is get good enough for us. Um, and then you tap in four and then click this toggles of the advanced settings. Okay, so. Lizan um, is having a problem. I got a message. I don't have a count. So Philip and Jake, could you see the, the chat? Can you check for me for uh, Zani, whether she has the account, which is one it's linked to telling me I don't have a count. I choose to sign in with my email. So. Ashira has the same issue. Um, okay, I think that's probably is a good time for, if you have a problem with login, maybe 
let's try to solve here. Um, if it's if it's if we can't, we probably have to have a breakout room for for you to to finish um, the login. Okay, for other people, other people. So once you see this, we have this long uh, window. We can do some edit. So we just type in dash dash account equal OH21 place dash dash reservation equals uh, equal one equal a CCS brain. Oh, it's just, yeah. All right, sorry for the account if it's set up too late, unfortunately, yeah, so we, we need a couple of times, sometimes a couple of hours beforehand to set up. So yeah, at least if it's too late, then that's a still, we can later on to get you access, but we will have informations will be available online. So you can replicate everything later. You're welcome to stay and watch. Um, all right, so once you have all of that and then click launch, So straight away, I should have an account ready on here. So I click connect. Yep, and then you have this uh, NO BNC and then click connect and then you have the desktop ready here. Um, you can't launch. So what we see before, hi, Catherine. So do you still have the SSH issue? You still having the issues. Um, could you, could you copy and paste? Could you copy and paste the information here, the comment line? and into the chat so we can help you. Yeah, could you please put the part that dash dash account all the way before SBash, uh, the one you type in all the way towards the end. And then there's, you need to select the T4. So firstly, on here, the pop-down menu, you select the T4. Yep, and then still four hours, and then highlight it here, all the way goes to the end, and then attach this part of the information at the very end, and click launch, give it a try. Okay. Um, Yeah, so Maggie, uh, Maggie, could you do the same things, Maggie? So copy and paste everything in here from S batch all the way to ACCS brain. Copy this and then paste on the chat. Three, four. All right. Mm. So let me see who I, um, who has to. Okay. So maybe we can start the. So apart from Catherine, Isabel, Maggie. Okay. So maybe we can sort out this logging issue through the uh, through the chat. 
Um, so Jay and Philip is helping them. If they really need interactions, uh, level will monitoring things on the chat and we're going to have um, uh, a separate Zoom rooms for this. Um, I just wonder if for the other people, are we all on? Uh, uh, I know Ashira had, was all good. Yeah, Paul's fine. Yes, thanks for the confirmation, Paul. Um, yeah, other people's looking good. If you give me a, a thumbs up, so confirm, then we 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 can uh, just in the mind of time. It's already seventeen minutes into the starting point, so we can, yep, yeah, let's let's quickly go into. Uh, I just explain to you guys that all of the files it looks like while we're waiting another couple of minutes for the people to sort out the login issues, and we're gonna start it uh, kick off this uh, each session. So when you first log on, so I will show you what is the file structure looks like. I probably you can already have a, a look at it. So, yeah, so your, your desktop probably is less busy than mine, but if you go to your home and okay, well, your home probably gonna be less busy than mine as well. So we're all gonna have find, we're able to find the OH21 scratch in here. So if you double click on that, um, you should be able to find your also cage, or if you log into your Gmail, your, your trainings, um, if you click the, um, uh, the terminal, if you're not quite sure what's your, your, uh, your username it is. So here is your username. If you log in your, uh, your personal Gmail, you probably will call the training 09 or training 10, et cetera. So that is your folder. And then say, I got my folder, I just double click in here and I have four folders here ready. So we'll start with the easy one. So it's a documentation. You refresh here. Oh. There should be, but this is the uh, um, document that I gave to, I gave a talk last time, last week for the um, uh, highlight session. So follow here one by one, you, just step by step, you can uh, do the visualization of the data. And then here we got hands-on sessions for the connect home and hands-on sessions for resting state. The documentation is here. Just for the eager mode is actually sticking here. Uh, I think you got you you probably should have them. Check Alex. Yeah, you should have them all in there. So I haven't to our single my copy. But it's important to if you find there's something is it's a different and you want to say okay. I want to restart it. The master copy is here. The ACCS workshop dash three has the exact identical the file structure. So for, for example, I'm missing this one and I will just copy into my folder and paste it on here. But for everyone else, I think you already synchronized, it will be good. So here is all of the, 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 um, the slides in the PDF format for each session. And then this is through the rest of the three folders indicating the three sessions we're going to have. Uh, taking eager mode, for example, you have the data, you have the example outputs, scripts, uh, there's some readme files, and each will guide you step by step later on for the um, how to use them. Um, I think. Yep. So um, are we ready to go? Have a look. So probably, yeah, it's twenty minutes now. So maybe we can ask Uchi to uh, kick off the session for eager mode analysis. Um, I will stop my sharing now, and I will keep uh, monitoring the chat function and help to sort all of the problems with logging or other technical issues. All right, Uchi. Yeah. Uh, and let me show screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. So I'm going to talk about the ship analysis and this will follow up from the KVS talk last week. But this time we'll dig into 
how to run the analysis on the CBL and, and massive platform. And at the beginning, I'd like to highlight that before this hands-on session, previously we also had some sessions for the for other toolbox like SPM FSL of Christopher, FMI prep, and uh, we can check on um, all of these tutorials on our ICCS website. And today I'm just focusing on the shape analysis based on the eigenmo decomposition. And I will talk about some background of the eigenmo decomposition, although Kevin told some of them before, but just as a quick reminder, and then I will talk about a very simple flow chart and how to decompose the cortical shape and reconstruct the surface. And then I will apply the similar method on the cortical thickness decomposition. And also, uh, if you have any questions, just type on the chair function. Why should we use shape analysis? If we look at these three objects, it's clear that they have the same volume, but the shapes are different. So shape analysis can be more informative than traditional use size related measures. And the shape analysis has become more, more fucked up recently. And it has been published in some papers like this brain print paper in your image. And it can also be used on clinical studies like this study for the dementia study. And uh, recently we also published a paper on eLife talking about using shape analysis as a, as a way to identify subjects like a neural fingerprint. Um, just as a quick reminder about what's uh, the Eigenmo decomposition. Basically, we use the Laplace Bottoming operator, which is an equation equation used in numerous fields like physics, and it's for describing the diffusion process like heat diffusion, electricity diffusion, and it can also be used to quantify the sh object shape, uh, like to view the, the wave as a standing wave. And then the, this is the original cortical surface, and we can decompose it to the spatial scales from the cost scale to the fine resolution scales. For example, the second eigen mode is the gradient from, from the from anterior to superior, and the third eigen mode, ten eigen mode with higher and higher index index of the eigen mode. It's it becomes finer and the finer resolutions. And the, each eigenmod or eigenfunction has its corresponding frequency, which is called eigenvalue. Here, today, we'll, we'll use some code to look at the original surface and to decompose it to a different scale and try, try to reconstructed these surfaces. And for the reconstruction, it's basically a linear combination of several eigenfunctions. For example, this is the first four eigenfunctions. This is the first 50 eigenfunctions, and then this is the first 200 eigenfunctions. And there are some dependent toolbox for the shape analysis like FreeSurfer, MATLAB, or you can also use Python. But today we just focus on using MATLAB and ship DNA or other scripts. The good thing to use uh, Massive is that many software like the FreeSurfer or MATLAB has already been, been installed on the Massive and that we can easily to, to use it. And uh, today for the shape DNA algorithm, we will use um, the license, we'll provide the license, but if you would like to run the shape analysis on your own research, you'd better to 
have to do your own license and to cite their paper. As this is Chow already taught. So uh, when you log into your, your home directory, you can see there are different folders like DTI, EM, uh, FMI. From my talk, I will only focus on the EM, which is for egg and mouth. And, uh, and uh, let me change to the massive. Can you see my screen? Okay. So yes, this is the data. We provide a data from HCP, and uh, this is an example, which is the, the final output that you can check, and also some scripts. For the HCP data, because all the HCP data has, has been stored on the massive, so you can, you can just apply for for your own access and then use them on massive. Uh, for the HCP, it also provides the list of output. And uh, today, I can. Uh, you need to go to the data folder and then to extract the folder here. Just to waste some time to extract the data. And after extracted, you can see uh, there's a T1 file. And then there's a, this file. And then we can go into this is the, the free software output. And today, because we'll work on the critical shift. So we'll, we will only focus on this folder under the surface. Okay. And, uh, and if you would like to apply for access to the HCP, you need to have your own license on the HCP website, and then you can you can also go to here to apply the access to the HCP data and massive. And then our first goal is to, to have a visualization of the original white surface. So in this folder, under surf, then there are a lot of surface files here. And for the wise, uh, for the critical surface, today we'll only use the LH down white, which is the white surface of the left hemisphere. And the white surface is the boundary between the gray matter and the white matter. Like here, this is the white surface and the this is a pure surface, but we will only use the white surface here. And then in our workshop, I provided some scripts that's easy to understand and easy to use. Um, under the scripts, uh, which is under the Egan mode and scripts, you can see there's a the ship analysis step the sh and you can click here and then uh, open with room, this one yeah. or I also provide a dream me and let me use um, one participant is the example. I also provide a readme. So if it's too difficult to open the, the SH file, then you can simply 
open the read me and they are identical. So at first, we need to open a massive terminal. Uh, massive terminal is here next to the fire box. Then click it. And we can. Uh, if the speed is too fast, then just let me know. And because the, there are some users, uh, the first time using CPL, and then maybe some users have no prior experience in neural image. So today, our speed will be very slow. And uh, we can have a more interactive. And then, uh, first to just to module load the main lab. And then uh, you don't need to you can ignore all of this. It won't seem on you on your end. And then have main lab. Oh sorry. Module load main lab. And then main lab. It will open and then let and also all the all the code are provided on on the dream me so you can simply copy paste and in the main lab just type cd cd is go to the directory that we'd like to use oh 21 and you can use tab, for example, uh, if you type YCH, you can use tab and then go to the folder. And then so simply goes to your own folder. Here, um, YCH is my username. So you, you should change to your own username. And then click this ACCS workshop ship analysis and file. Okay. And then we can simply copy paste. And for the main lab, you can see the files on the left hand side. And here, this is for the scripts and you can type on the command window and uh, the data after loaded into MailApp, it will show in the workspace. Uh, you can also use the run section function. And here you, you should change to your username. Okay, run, oh sorry. We can run this section and uh, it will create a folder into your own if you change it, your username. And then, okay, this is into the surface folder. And then our first step is to load the white surface into melee from section. And then you can see there's a left sur surface here. And for the next step, we'll look at this surface. So you can run the wrong section here. So this is the Y surface. And then you can click this button to rotate it. And look at this one. But practically, you don't need to look at the original surface before running the egg decomposition. 
it just give us some intuition about the original surface looks like. And for running the the agamotic composition, then we can go back to see uh, the Rumi file or or another yeah, uh, SH file. So, oh, oh, we are here. We can simply copy and paste on another new terminal because we already opened the main left terminal. So if we would like to use the terminal, we, we need to open another new one. Right here. Paste. Oops. Change it. Oh, and the name you also need to change to your your name. Oh, this is this is incorrect. Uh, this should be. Oh, sorry, I uh, found the wrong section. We should go from this one here. So we need to first module the, the free suffer because we will use the free suffer module. Module load free suffer. So I already loaded the, the free suffer by default. That's fine. And every time, if you want to check what's the module that you already have, you can check like module list. Then you can see here the free suffer already here and like FSL. And then we can go to the next step. Hmm. Just to go to the script file. Hmm. So I should type my name YSHEN and then go to the scripts. And if you want to check what's inside this folder, you can type LOS to see what's inside here. And uh, for example, for our analysis step, you can also type VI space ship analysis steps and enter. And then we can look them. And then we need to Copy paste the subject ID, the space, the pass, and also to convert the Y surface into the VTK file. Because the ship DNA algorithm works on the VTK format. So you can copy and uh, and sometimes if you find the copy paste function doesn't work, then you can use here. Uh, and uh, this one, click board and uh, copy. Then, as, mm, yeah, mm, some problems. So let me check. Uh, and here we only use one subject. So the subject ID is only for one subject, but if you run for a list of subjects, then you can specify to read the list. And is everyone followed my speed? Okay. 
And then we need to, because we need to convert the Y surface into BQK file. Just, just use this line, MRIS convert. It can convert a wide range of the imaging files. And then here, I specify the subject directory. The subject directory is, um, we wrote in, in this file, and then also to convert the surface, left uh, Y surface into the BTK file. And we need to run the shift DNA in, inside the script because it has the, the license and the, the key into the folder. And then we can run the, the shift DNA. Um, So we can run the shift in and here, this is the script and uh, we just set up the mesh. Here is the, the BTK file where it sits and the, the number 200 here means we will calculate 200 eigenvalues. As, as I mentioned before, with higher and higher number of the eigenvalue or, or the eigen function, it measures the final and the final resolution scales. So here you can specify 200, 1,000 or even 100,000. But if you specify a higher number of the eigenvalues, it takes longer and longer time. For 200, it may take Within, within 80 seconds. But if you run for, for example, a thousand, it may take five minutes. And the EVEC here means the eigen function or eigen model, eigen vector, the same, same thing here. And, uh, eigen, and this function, eigen low quality is for using it's basically to ignore if the, the image quality is not very good, but it's, we usually use this option because they are very seldom to have a very perfect imaging quality. So, Yuchi, I have a question for that. So usually if you decompose a, a, a whole brain, or this is half of the brain, is that 200 numbers of 200, it's, it's, it's good enough for just for research purpose? Uh, here we just use the left hemisphere, and the number of the eigen mod depends on your research purpose. Um, for example, in my in our study on the ELF publications, we found that uh, about less than one hundred and fifty is enough for identifier subjects. But for some purposes, you might need a more finer final scales. For example, some, some studies use the eigen, eigen function to decompose the curvature. And in that study, they use 5,000 eigen functions to, to uh, reconstruct the curvature. Yeah, so it it's really depends on your purpose. And in our, our labs, another study to decompose the functional connectivity, they use, yeah, they use 200 eigen, eigen mod. Thanks for that. And then to decompose it. So as I said, we need to wait for about 75 seconds. And because here we use the license from Kevin, so you may see we're kind of Kevin and Aquino. But if you apply for your own, own license, it will be changed to your name. And this is where our VTK file sits. And it also shows our options that we provided.
So we just need to wait a few more seconds. And when using the CVL system, you can choose the different compute, computing and capability like the light compute or heavy compute. Right now, because we only use light compute, so the speed is not as fast as using heavy compute. But if everyone chooses heavy compute, then we don't have enough space for the, we don't have enough nodes. So it, it, it has generated the, it, this is the eigenvalue. And uh, this is the eigen function. I'll explain more details later. And because we specify 200, so it will be, because this script is written from the Python script and it's zero index. So it's from zero to 199. Yeah, so it has it's been done. And it will create a file, this file into the space that we specify. Then we can, because we can see here, it's quite of a lot of information that we don't need. Usually we only need the a scale and we don't need like this, this size, something like that. So we use this function here. The eigenvalue and then the eigenfunctions. And you can just copy paste on your terminal. And this step also takes um, about 30 seconds to one minute to complete. Because it needs to extract the information and then also to save it on, on massive. So need to wait for it. Oh. And is there any question at the moment? Check my slide. So, and the, all of today's uh, PowerPoint are all provided in in Massive, so you can download it. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's done. After it's done, then you can see the, the terminal shows this dollar sum on the ne next line. And after we extracted the eigenvalue and the eigenfunctions, then we can go back to our main lab. You can run for this section. This section is basically to, to read the eigenfunction and the eigen more eigenfunction and the eigenvalue into MATLAB. So we simply run this section. Uh, The Aiken value is quite light. It's, for example, if we only specify 200 Aiken values, then it's just a vector with 200 scalars. But for Aiken function, it's quite huge because uh, the row number is the vertex numbers, and it's usually about like 150,000 vertices. So, so we can 
we select this subject because the vac vac vertex numbers is more than 160,000. So the row number of the eigenfunction will be this same number. And the number of the column will be the number of the, the eigenvalue or the eigenfunction that we specified in the shift DNA algorithm. And uh, like this, it's the same number and then times 200, but for eigenvalue it's only 200. And we can, we can check the eigenvalue. So eigenvalue is basically, it's um, at first glance, you, you may feel, oh, it's just a, a straight line, but if you zoom in, Actually, they are not a, a straight line. And each subject has different in their, their eigenvalues. Yeah. And then we can also look at each eigenfunction. For example, here, I specify the eigen, eigenfunction number equals two. Then we can look at it like this one. But you can, of course, you can change to, for example, 50. And then run section. Or you can also specify to a higher number. Like this. But you can only specify the number that you have read in your main lab. And we can also use these eigenfunctions to decompose the surface. For example, if we look here, we, dec uh, we recompose, uh, sorry, we reconstruct the surface into 50 eigenfunctions. It's like this one. And then we, if we use a lower number, okay. Yeah, we say it's a, it's a more cost scale, or if we specify to a higher number, then it becomes this one. So let me check. So it's basically depends on the how how um, final scale that you want to use to decompose or to reconstruct the surface. And then we can apply the same approaches on the thickness data. And first we can just see the original thickness surface. This is the original thickness data. And the, the shape here is the original one. And the, the thickness, we can look at this color bar. If the color is more closer to yellow, then it means it's closer to like the four millimeter. And this is the original thickness. And then we can decompose the thickness by using the eigenfunctions that we already have. Like the eigenfunction, but to decompose it, Here, we use the 50 eigenfunctions and we can check with the original one. What it comes off. So we can see here because it's more closer scale. And if we change it to 200, Then it's more closer to the original thickness data. And you may wonder then, uh, what's next? How can we use it on our own study? As I said, you can use the eigenvalue for analyze the subjects 
critical shift. For example, this is one sub. This line is from one subject, and the A and A two are all on the same line. They are from the same subject but at different time points. So we can see here, their shape are quite consistent against the time period, but they are different from another subject. So you can analyze um, the individual eigenvalue or another approach is to grouping the eigenvalue together. Uh, previous studies shows that eigenvalues can be, have, have some properties that we can group them together. For example, from the first two to fourth eigenvalue is the first eigengroup. And then from fifth to ninth eigenvalue is the second eigengroup and so on. And of course you can use like the thickness decomposition. And then when we decompose the cortical thickness, um, for example, we can go back to here. Um, when we decompose the cortical thickness, we can have a, uh, yeah, this is similar to the decomposition coefficient. And we can look at it in here. It's like a coefficient and we can also compare the coefficient across subjects or just to use the, the reconstructed thickness that yeah, that's all. Uh, any questions? Thanks, Yuchi. Um, yeah, I think uh, we have to move on because we're already halfway through. So, so you have two sessions to uh, to keep going. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat function to type in for Yuchi to answer. Um, and uh, I think now we move on to the uh, um, DTI-based uh, connectivity, structure connectivity and measurement, which is usually we refer to the connect home analysis uh, by Susan. Yeah, so Susan, if you could start and then probably keep it in about 40 minutes. Beautiful. Give me 10 to 15 minutes. So, yeah. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Good. And can you see the screen? Okay. Um, so we are focusing on a structural connectivity analysis today, and we are going to use, I guess everyone has their own folder and um, under your own name folder on the massive, you ha should have connectome. And within the connectome, we are using to, we are, we'll use data folder. And this is A to Z pipeline of our, um, uh, the code that we are using for today. Okay, so first I want everyone to open in terminal, just right click in your, um, within this directory in the connectome data folder, open in terminal. And then everyone should export their name. So I will use Susan, so you should do it for your own name. Okay. okay. Now, um, this is our raw data. Uh, I'll show you the structure. So within one subject folder, we have diffusion data. Uh, when we convert from DICOM to Nifty, we'll get the B values. Uh, for our diffusion sample data, we have 67 volumes with seven B0 volumes that are interleaved. So you can see at the beginning, there's one B0 and then the magnitude of our diffusion is uh, 3000 and another one. And so we have seven B0 volumes in our uh, diffusion. 
Uh, and then we, you should have a B vector, so which shows the direction of the diffusion in your MRI, diffusion MRI data. So it's just a quality check to see that when you convert from, di from DICOM to NIFTY, you should have this. And this is your main diffusion, raw diffusion data. So now we can move on. So first we load the MR3 X version three, and then you give it the directory copy these lines and paste it in your massive terminal. Now we can convert our um, raw diffusion data from Nifty to MIF format with using FSL grad to grab the uh, diffusion information, which are the VBEC and B value data. So copy and paste in your terminal. So basically it's just converting from Nifty to MIF format, which we will use MRTRIX software. Now, uh, just to save the time, I've uh, converted the uh, reverse in uh, phase encoding of the diffusion for you, and I've copied it in your main folder. So within your subject, so this is the reverse from left to right, and it's uh, I already converted to me for you and copied in your uh, main diffusion data. Now, um, let's have a look at this raw diffusion. So copy this one. So hope everyone is uh, opening this raw diffusion data. You can go to your tool on top right and click on view option. And here we should change the uh, intensity to uh, 150. So this is our the first volume, which is B0 when there is no diffusion. And you can scroll up to go to the next volumes. These are your main diffusion volumes. And every if we go up, every 10 volume will have one uh, another B0. So if you remember, we had interleaved B0 volumes across our diffusion, across our 67 uh, volume of our diffusion data. Uh, now we can close it. So it's better to quality check the um, all your subjects, all your diffusion volumes. Now we move to generating the standard deviation images to check the movement artifacts. We can do it for no B0, means the main diffusion. Paste it in your terminal. You get this warning because we are using dash force. It will overwritten if you have previously produced any uh, same um, similar output. And also we do it for the B0 using the DWI extract to see the standard deviation of our B0 image. And then you can have a look. Okay. So this is the standard division of our B0. And basically you may see some high variability of signal intensity across the brain stem and maybe cerebellum. And also maybe from here we can open uh, uh, B0 uh, diffusion standard deviation, okay? And it should look like this. Okay, we can close and move on. 
this is our pre-processing step. It takes one hour. Uh, so we uh, do part of it uh, during this webinar and we will skip uh, doing the main advanced pre-processing steps. But I, I will explain to you the parameters. So first we denoy. So we should copy these two lines. Paste it in your massive. Massive terminal. So we are removing the noise from our raw diffusion data. And then, then here we are subtracting the denoise data from the raw data and collect uh, residuals. And we'll check it together now. So we shouldn't see any obvious um, white matter, gray matter, CSF like the structures, like no anatomical uh, structures within our residual image. Okay, it's ready now. We copy MR view residuals here. And that's the dash mode means that it shows you the orthogonal view so you can see all the views. And you should scroll through all the image and see that this is the noise that have been subtracted from the um, um, main diffusion data. And if you want, you can have a look at the noise here as well. So that was the noise that had been removed. Okay, good. Now, next step is um, removing the Gibbs stringing artifacts. We use MRD Gibbs, copy, paste it in your massive terminal. Good. Now, before moving to the motion and distortion correction, we need to get the B0 volumes from our main uh, phase encoding images. Here for, for our sample data, we, our main uh, direction is right to left, and we have one B0 for left to right for correction. So here we get the B0 from the denoise data. Actually, we can get the two lines together. And then using MR mass to take the mean over our seven B0 volumes, because we just need the mean of the rows. Okay. Now, uh, once we uh, take the mean of our seven B0 volumes, we need to concatenate it with our reverse bond. So it's very important that you first put the um, main phase encoding um, V0, and the second one should be your reverse phase encoding. So here we use MRCAT to concatenate these two directions. And then let's have a look at the our B0 pair. So we call it pair and we use this output uh, as an input for our main pre-processing step. So if again, you go to tools, view options, you will see that I can make it bigger. So the first one is the, you can see that the, uh, in, Diffusion is tilted to right direction. This is the first B0 uh, uh, from the main phase encoding direction. And the second volume is tilted to left. Yeah, so we use these two volumes uh, as and call it B0 pair for our main pre-processing step. So as I said, it will take an hour to do so. Uh, here is the main code. We use DW, DWI FSL preprog. Uh, you give the input of your denoise and um, corrected for Gibbs ringing diffusion data. And it, here it says that the direction of um, uh, our diffusion is right to left. We are using the pair V0 and the readout time 
This is something that you need to figure out from your um, MRI scanner protocol, depending on your own data for our data is computed as this. And, and then for any current uh, uh, corrections, we need SLS peg, which is um, the, the order of your slices. So uh, for our data, I can show you, um, it was interleaved and it has 60 slices. So it should start from zero uh, because the FSL is reading from zero and it ends up to 59. Okay. And then with the eddy options, we have ripple, which replaced the outliers and this MP order and S2V. These are all parameters that are correcting for the movements within each volume. So slice to volume movement corrections. And if you want to know more about these parameters, I recommend, highly recommend to have a look at the um, FSL user guide uh, under the eddy section. Okay, so for now we can copy our pre-processed data from this directory. So you just need to copy this line, copy, Okay, let's have a look that uh, we have it in our folder. So yeah, this is the prep eddy. That's the output that we just copied. Okay. Now we can move, uh, remove the field in homogeneities using PWI bias correction. We use ants. Um, so again, copy this code into your terminal. Okay, done. Now we can use MR info to get the information of our fully pre-processed data. So here you can see that we have 67 volumes and the resolution of our diffusion data is 2.5 by 2.5. And uh, this shows the History command that we've used for pre processing with all the parameters here. Okay, it looks good. Now we can move to next uh, section, which is um, estimating the response functions. So, uh, first we need to estimate these response functions for uh, each subject separately. And we are using the MRTRIX3 tissue, so we need to module purge. So, actually, clearing all the uh, previous loaded modules and loading this version. Okay, now we can have a look at the response function for white matter tissue. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the, these response functions are kernels that model the diffusion data within a voxel for a, a single fiber orientation. This is, um, for B0, which is isotropic, if you click on file and click on next, we can see the response function for white matter tissue. 
for which is for this is for B three thousand value. For so for higher B values, it uh, for white matter tissue it tends to uh, be like a pancake or donut shape, which means the preferred uh, direction of the diffusion within the white matter tissue. Okay, we can close it. We can have a look at the gray matter issue as well. It should be uh, a sphere for both diffusion. So this is for B0. Again, there is it, the diffusion is isotropic. And if you go to file next for B3000, you can see that it's very small and it's an a sphere. Is correct. And for CSF, it, this one would be very, very smaller. Okay. So once you've created the response function for your indiv individual subjects, then you have to take an average uh, to get the group average response function for each tissue type of white matter, gray matter, and CSF. We, uh, we should do it because for our quantitative uh, group analysis, we need to use a unique set of the uh, average uh, of this response function. But here we can, we should skip this part because um, we are just running through one subject. And then you use this group average response functions for your, within your main study for your uh, further um, analysis. Now let's move on to T1 to brain extraction. Copy this place. So here we are using the HD bit um, software, which is very quick. It's less than a minute and it's very precise. So you, if you need, want to need more, you can uh, have a look at this paper here. So the output should be a brain extracted T1 and also a brain mask. Hope everyone is following and this speed is not too high or too low. Okay, it's getting there. Now you can have a look at your T1 folder. Yes, it has brain and then brain mask. Um, okay, now we can have a look at the quality of the output. We need to uh, load for visualization. We need to load FSL. And here we are using this version 6.0.3. It creates us a slice directory, and then we need to, for to view your own output, you should copy this link. So for everyone is different, copy, and here type Firefox, and paste the paste the output link, enter, and it takes us to the HTML output and. Here you can see how perfectly it has removed the skull and non-brain structure. Okay. So we've done the brain extraction, check the uh, output, and now we, we can move on to upsampling the diffusion data and generating the brain mask. Um, and copy this all the way to here. 
So basically, we upsample our diffusion data to get better outcomes for better results. And we are uh, upsampling from 2.5 resolution to 1.3. This is how recommended by the documentation in MR3 uh, community. So now in your MR info, you can see that the resolution has uh, been uh, upsampled to 1.3. So then I have a question in the Q&A. So yes. Lead saying that. So. Yeah, she has two questions now. Can you? Yeah. Okay. What is the benefit of using the group coverage response function so that individual response function can use the response? Okay, we haven't implement, uh, implemented the uh, group response function uh, here in the webinar because uh, we don't have the whole sample data set here. And the advantage is that so um, most of them are very similar for most of the response functions are really similar, but it's better uh, based on the documentation. It's recommended to get the group average uh, and then use just one unique set. Um, because we, when we are computing um, the fiber orientation distribution, uh, we need to have these response functions, and it's better to do just one uh, to use just one unique set uh, for later on that we want to do group analysis. It was mentioned When you want to use yes, yeah, so yes, yeah, so we have upsampled uh, from 2.5 to 1.3. That's right. So, what's the question? I have read you need to. Yeah, I don't understand the question, the second question. <sighs> So, yes, so we have upsampled after the pre processing. Um, uh, if it's clear, I can move on to the next. Oh, so, I, I can just, just chime in. So, Lee's question is about well, why we do the upsampling. I, I guess at this stage, it's mainly for the, the car registrations and then, you know, to, to, uh, between the uh, diffusion. And then the structure in it um, for the pixel based analysis because we're not doing pixel at the moment. So we're, we're working on that. So we can dig in some information about the, the pixels and then we can just come back to you later of that question. So yeah, we, yeah, we will get some more detail. Let's keep going with the, the, uh, the okay. current plan. Thank you, Sean. So we can move on. And now we are changing directory to T1 and co-registering the uh, T1 to diffusion space to get the brain mass. Uh, we need this uh, upsampled brain mass to be in the diffusion space. It takes um, roughly 30 seconds. So once this uh, brain mask is ready, then we binarize it and convert it to MIF format and copy it in our main diffusion folder. Okay, so we use FSL mass to binarize the mask. Okay. Now let's check the output. 
Use official eyes and overlay the generated free mask to see if it works correctly or not. Okay, here we go. We can change the color of the mask and then we can use this opacity here and decrease it to see that it, uh, he's done, the mask is uh, being done correctly. Okay, so that's the visual check of our output. We can close the FSL eyes and move on to the next step. Um, here is the pause tree. So uh, uh, in this section, we are computing the fiber orientation distribution using the CST method, constraint spherical deconvolution. This uh, would take up to an hour. So uh, we skip running this in the webinar and you can copy the output from here. So just copy these lines into your massive terminal. So now we can check the FOD outputs. Uh, so to view this, uh, we will combine uh, um, white matter, gray matter, and CSF to a single image. And to, uh, we can use MR convert to grab the first volume of the white matter FOD normalized, and then uh, con concatenated with the gray matter and CSF uh, output. So we use, we copy this. Uh, first we need to change directory to uh, uh, change directory to diffusion folder. Okay, now. We use MR view to uh, load the white matter FOD norm on top of the VF image that we just created, which has three tissue types. Okay. Um, in this image, so uh, the red color shows the CSF. The uh, green uh, specifies the gray matter and the blue color uh, represents the white matter tissue. And to see that the direction are correct, uh, you can click on, uh, at, for example, CC, Corpus Colossant here, and we can zoom in by controlling, uh, keeping the, uh, holding down the control and using your mouse. And then we use this to scroll up and what should we see is that the, the color of the direction of the water molecules within the white matter tissue should be red, uh, which is correct. So we have, um, not to be confused, we have two types of color coded here. So the first one, the first line shows the direction of the, the, the color of the um, tissue types, different tissue types. And the second line that I've provided here for you, it shows the um direction of the diffusion so for red should be along x-axis which is correct from left to right on cc and for uh, the green color is the direction along the y-axis and the blue color shows the direction along the z-axis okay now we can close this and um, so we've checked the outputs now uh, it's a bit of time consuming part, but we, we, we do it together. So we need to register the T1 to diffusion space. To do this, first we need to extract the op B0 upsampled uh, from the main upsampled diffusion data, and then apply the brain mask. So copy and paste here. Then we uh, go to our uh, T1 directory and use FSL fast to segment the T1 to uh, white matter tissue. Uh, this is why we need it for uh, boundary-based registration of registering 
um, T1 to diffusion space. So I'll copy and paste here. It may take a minute or so, or maybe more than one minute. So the reason that we are using this is that it's better always to get the lower, um, to register the lower um, resolution uh, image, which is our diffusion space to the T1, and then get the transformation matrix and invert it and apply it to our T1 to get the T1 to diffusion space. So it, uh, it may sound a bit confusing. It has two steps. Uh, here you can have a look at the slide. Um, so we completed the FOD. This is the boundary based registration of T1 to diffusion. So first we extract the B0 of sample B0 and then apply the brain mask. And then we use uh, FAST to segment the white matter tissue. Uh, here is the output of our interest, partial volume two. This is the white matter. And then we um, threshold this image that everywhere. So if you look at here, the partial volume of the uh, white matter is more than 0.5. Then we threshold it and binarize it and call it the white matter segmented mask. And then we use it uh, in the next step using FLIRT and using the cost function, which is uh, doing the boundary based registration of the uh, B0 to T1. So as I said, we are uh, first registering the lower, uh, the lower resolution MRI, which is diffusion, which is 1.3 to higher resolution MRI, which is T1, which is one. Uh, and then when we, once we get the output transformation matrix, we can apply the inverse to get the T1 to diffusion space. Okay. So next we are using the cost function using FLIRT to get the B0 to T1 space. Okay. Hopefully it finishes soon. Okay, here we go. So we copy the next steps, which was the boundary based registration. And then we can transform this output, which is uh, within FSL. So we use FLIRT. So we convert from FSL to MRTRIX format because we will use MRTRIX for the tractography. And I can use the whole. So once we uh, converted from uh, FSL to MRTRIX format, then we apply the inverse, as you can see here, apply the inverse on um, row T1 image with S call for the free sephir analysis, and also apply the inverse in the next line. Um, on the brain extracted T1 for generating 5TT tissue, which I'll explain in next steps. So you can copy all these three. Okay, it's ready now. We can copy and paste to convert the format of our um, transformation matrix and applying the inverse on our T1. Okay. 
So to check the outputs, we use again FSL, FSLI. So we are overlaying this. T1 are diffusion to see that, um, you see that these are registered properly into the same space. Okay. Now we've uh, registered the T1 to diffusion, we can move on to next step, which is five tissue type segmentation. Um, it's, uh, there are different algorithms that you can use. We use FSL. So copy paste this line and this pre-mask um, means that we already applied the brain mask on our T1. It may take, uh, again, five minutes. If you want to have a break or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. So if you go to the slides, you've registered. And now we are in this step. So we need this five tissue type segmentation, which is basically segments the T1 to cortical gray matter, subcortical gray matter, white matter, CSF, and the fifth, I guess it's for a disease one, which we don't need it. Um, so we, this is recommended to do uh, for anatomically constrained tractography. We need to use this 5TT image because it helps us to precisely um, mention that where the reconstructed white matter tracts should be stopped uh, for the uh, for the within the gray matter white matter interface. To give you more explanation of what we've done so far, we use the uh, CSD method, which estimates the multiple fiber directions within a box cell. Uh, Susan, did you, can you see the, there's a question in the uh, Q&A. Uh, Aaron is asking, dear Susan, could you explain why you calculate the response function before the up sampling? and uh, not after. Um, uh, I guess this is two different things, right? So the up sampling, I think this is probably related to this mm -hmm. question from Liz. The up sampling is only happens on the B0. It's mainly for the structure wise. So they're using B0 as a bridge to do the proper registration between the DW and the T1. So that's the main reason of up sampling. However, the calculate the response function is more onto the rest of the volume. So if you look at DTI, there are 67 volumes. So B0 is the one that we have sampled. All the others, we not, I don't think we have sampled the other part of the, the DTI data. So when you calculate the, mm -hmm. the direction related information, that should be in the uh, original resolution. Is that correct? Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter to if we do the response function like, on the preprocessed data or after upsampling, because it's just a basic knowledge to uh, then do the main fiber orientation density computation, which is basically we use the upsampled data. Um, Or is that answer your questions or that it's you, you still you want to clarify the um, the question a bit more?
So if Hunter Gun is following and getting some break. Sorry, yeah. Again, so for any questions that you uh, don't have time to ask or confuse, so there are, um, you can always reach us out uh, through the email. So yeah, we're happy just to help you out. Um, again, the, if you have uh, some other suggestions, you're welcome just to get in touch as well. Then we can um, have a chat together. Yeah. Thanks, So once this five tissue type segmentation will be completed, so it's still running, then we move to free, uh, free surfer. Uh, first, we do it for pre-processing using recon all, which will skip this uh, within the webinar because it may take seven hours or more. And then um, we, we can move on to our tractography. So once this is done, we can copy the output of our free sefer, which is provided here for you. So I'll give it, give it another minute to finish. Yeah, uh, Orinus also have uh, questions. Yeah, well, we'll have a look at the upsample issues for the B0. So here's another question. Uh, notice that we use the switching between FSLIs, no, FSLIs and MR view. Uh, yes. so, I, so I think they are the same, especially the latest FSL can load some track things, uh, the tractographer. Um, yeah, I'll ask the student to answer the question. Yeah, it depends on your preference, so how you feel comfortable to use MRView or um, FSLIs. Um, for some for some outputs, I prefer myself to use FSLIs, and uh, exactly may, maybe for the next step, which is for like parcellation to see the nodes, uh, it has more set of the colors that you can choose from, and for some other things, it's uh, I use MRView so. It's just a personal choice. It doesn't make any uh, difference on your output. So sorry if, if if I was switching between these two. Yeah, but but mainly all of the processing uh, steps are based on um, MR trees. MR trees, yeah. yes. And if you use the single shell tree tissue. CSD, so it decomposed the single shell diffusion data to uh, white matter, gray matter, and CSF compartments. Um, yeah, so which is uh, to correct for the partial volume effects of the gray matter and CSF. And you, if you have multi, multi shell diffusion data, then you can use uh, a multi shell CSD. Okay, so it's done. Now we can, uh, just to save time, I copy the uh, free surfer output from here. Copy. Susan, yes, just please be a mind of time. So could you finish in sure. a couple of minutes? Yeah. Sorry. Sure, okay. sure. Um, so now we are uh, copying the output of our free surfer. And then uh, again, we skip the uh, main uh, step of uh, generating tractography. Here we use uh, traction, and these are our parameters that we use. So uh, then we sifted the output of the tractography to clean up and normalize the number of uh, the uh, reconstructed white matter tracks. So again, you can copy the um, our output sample data. So these parameters are very 
depending on your data, they can be changed. This is how we play it with our data to get this uh, parameter set up. So once it's copied, we can change directory to our diffusion and use track edit to uh, down sample the number of uh, the tracks that we constructed. So we constructed 20 million, but here we are down sampling to 100K just for visualization. So you go to view, part of view, it gives you the all view. Make it bigger, and then you can go to tools overlay. So, this is our file city, and again, you can unload and load it again. Yes, yeah, so and this is without the white matter FOD. If we bring up the FOD, and then the T1 would be like this. So I need to rush. Okay. So then we use this. Um, for parcellation, we skip this. You can just copy our output. Um, we convert it and then I check it in. You want me to finish? Yes, so then we can, you can go anything, so random, and it shows you the parcellations. And we use the Desikon Kiliani Atlas, so we have 84 modes. Um, so we are providing you all the code and <clears throat> um, all the slides, so you can play with the sample data. And if you already have diffusion background, then you can provide us some feedback or uh, help us to improve our pipeline if you're happy to collaborate. So here we are kind of um, generating the structural connectivity matrix. And then for visualization, we use MATLAB. Um, so hopefully it takes less than a minute. So the connectome, um, our structure connectivity matrix is symmetric. It has zero diagonal, and we are using the output of our SIFT2, which provides a, a weight for each uh, reconstructed streamline. Let's see if it's ready now. Okay, we open MATLAB. I prefer to use this version. You can do any version you want. Um, and so once you are in MATLAB, you can read, use the read matrix to uh, read your CSC. Um, and then the bigger the connect -on. Uh, so the first figure is the structural connectivity matrix outcome, and the second one is the log to have a, give you a better view. And then this is the histogram of the connectome. So I can uh, stop sharing and choke and continue to save time. Thanks, everyone. And let us know if you have any questions. And All right, thanks, Susan. Uh, I will try to finish the rest of things in 10 minutes. Um,
So, uh, so basically, I'm just going to talking about. It's going to be slightly different for my part. So, I'm going to talk about the using Kong to box to process resonance state function MRI stuff. So, it's a bit different as what um, Susan and the uh, uh, Uchi was talking about. So, this this is very interactive. So, basically, that means you can use your just on your mouse to get all of the things done. Um, so you just pointing the files, click the button and get it through. So it's relatively easier. And I have most of the information is already captured in this PDF files. So basically if you follow that one by one, you, you won't have any problems. Um, the planning was just firstly talk about what is the files look like. And then we try to process some data. So we have a BIS format input, uh, N equal to four, and then we can get all of the steps and to we start to set up the pre-processing. Then that will take a long time to run and we can start stopping there. And then we have the data has already been processed. We have any 10 small data set already been processed that we can load it up and we can have a look. So probably because of the time, we can probably all together go to these levels. Uh, and for the review one, it's very similar as the highlight session. Um, so we can have a quick look if we got the time. All right, so again, before that, there was a, a other software that we can use. So Kong is one of them. And then you will have really nice instructions for Kong software in their website. Okay, so here's all the data that have been put together. So if you come to here, you have into the data folder, there is a hands-on data. As I said, n equal to uh, four. And we have all of the data that's pretty much piece format, anatomical. Uh, that's already been processed. So for you guys, this should be very clean. Uh, and then this is the data we're going to run. And then the demo data is the one is paired with the uh, example output. Yeah. So what we're going to do, because we're going to run something, we uh, firstly, let's create an output folders in under your folder. So uh, in a resting state fMRI here, I just create a folder called uh, probably hands on outputs. Okay. Um, and now we can just open the terminal. If you follow here, you can just easily copy and paste the command. Paste. And then the MATLAB will be open and just stop by its sync. I think I have the, the data has already been processed. So I'm going to have the clean versions of the data, which is copying from, uh, as I said, this is our master copy. The data is a hands-on. You don't need to do this. I think it's probably, um, so I just need to do that. So we can have exactly the same working. So let's paste it. And I will not let, yeah. All right. So sorry for the, uh, the confusion. So if looking at here, if you open your anatomic folders and the session, which is what your folder looks like, there's only uh, what JSON file and then there's Nifty and there's the one is unzipped. So um, that's actually, we don't need this one. Uh, yeah, but either way. So the uh, um, uh, Kong will actually recognize it. So at least there's no segmented files over there. Um, so this is the MATLAB. If that's your first time using it. So here's the interface, uh, very similar to what Ichi did. You need to set path, but I'll just tell you how to do it. Just using your uh, mouse. So you add set path and you go to add folder, go to our scripts, you know, RS FMR folder and highlight the column and click open and you can close and no. Probably notice there is a column already here, but the version that we I provided is a relatively um, 
and a later versions fix a lot of bugs in there and then in the command window as i said before, as i write in here you just need to type in com yep sign. so just type in c o n n and you will have cons load up So this is the main interface of cons when you get in. So there are two buttons here. So because we are starting a new one, so we just click new and they were starting a new project. I remember this is the new folders that we create. We can just double click. So we jump into this new folders. You can change whatever the name you like. Um, yeah, so you can put whatever the name it you like, and then they will save as a .mat files and it is a folder pa uh, pairing with it, with all of the information. So once you have starting the project, so here's, you get a first tab is active and all of the other is gray. So we do step by step. The very important thing is we need to load the data. So Kong is very powerful from loading the data from DICOM, the bees or FMI prep output, and then even SPM, because it's based on SPM. So let's do the B's data set and see whether they can recognize the data properly or not. So you go to data folders and just a highlight on the parental directory of the, uh, um, the B's format and click select. And they said, okay, one folder is fine. So they are analyzing the root content. So if you have a lot of subjects, they will do it, use a little bit longer time. And now it's all fine. So we'll just click okay. So that input of five is all loaded. Yeah. So if you load, you want to load all of them, just highlight all of them and just click import there. Yep. Yeah. And then it's telling you, we're going to import four participants with a four function and a four T1. So continue. So everything is very interactive. If they have a problem, they will say there's a problem. And if they have, if, if there's uh, anything that usually you can make the change, make changing. Um, Okay, and then once you're up, so you can use a structure and a function basically to navigate all of the image. You can have a quick look. And the ROIs is a tricky part. So you can add in more region of interest. So, uh, I think most of you, so it's probably, I'm not quite sure you guys have the DLPFC in there. So that's like a customer uh, ROI that I did. But the, um, this is the, the standard parcellation that they have. And if you want to add more, just click, oh, there's the ROI tools. There's a lot of other things that you can play with it. It's very powerful. Um, so conditions, we can skip with this because we're only talking about one time point. If it's two time points here, it's, you need a little bit more work. Uh, and then I would jump into this covariant of second level. So here's the time that you can put in some uh, variables. Uh, for example, group, you can say, well, get a group one. And uh, subject one is group one, subject two is group one. Yep, and just press enter. Yep, the group one variable is there. And you can add in more. So for the time, we're not doing it. Um, and then before I start <clears throat> starting showing the results, the very important part is, I'm gonna show in here, is doing a pre-processing. If I hit these buttons, I'm gonna show in the most the powerful part of this, oh, it's here. So you can select the, whatever the pipelines you like. You can even customize the pipeline yourself. So one thing I will probably easily to do because it's cross-sectional, we're going to do the default pre-processing and I click OK. And even in here, it's telling you all of the step-by-step -step things. You can play with it, but it's sometimes you, if you start, you can remove everything and, and then start over again. Uh, all of this, I reckon not to touch it, but this very cool function here. It's distribute, distributed process running the Dracon process of Unix. Um, and then that's for Unix and a Mac. So I should reckon to start with this and then we can click start to make things running. So the first very important one is the parallel jobs. So because we are on massive, so if you open a new desktop, you will see. So we have eight ports. So eight cores give me thinking like I can say, if I got a one or two cores working on something else, I can easily parallel it into six cores. 
So for example, in here, I can just parallel it into four cores, or oh, sorry, four jobs. So what happened is the jobs will submit into four cores and it will run parallel. Um, and there is some basic setup. So the Kong will ask all of the questions that they don't have, we didn't tell them uh, specifically. Say for example, the slice order, there's a lot of great options that you can put it in. But because it's a beats format, we can directly get it from the uh, the JSON file. And if it's not, you can always do whatever it is the correctly, you can uh, modify the slice order and then you can even skip it. I know some people don't want to do it. And then here is about the um, outline def um, definitions. Again, there's a lot of other things that you can play with. It's very similar like FMI prep. So you can put it into that the quality check. I mean, the, the quality filters. So I'll probably just starting with intermediate settings just for today, I click OK. And then the all of this, the bounding box resolution and the tissue uh, probability maps, I reckon they use the, uh, the, the default. Yeah, and then the smooth level, um, I tend to choose six millimeters for my study, um, but if you want eight or 12, that's up to you. So once everything is done, it will start to running. And if you click advanced options, you will see that's what I mean. So the Kong is actually separate the job evenly into four, uh, four nodes or four little uh, CPUs is running. And if you click the blocks, you can easily to check for all of the course, which one is it's running. And this is a subject one. Uh, and then this is all the different of the well, it's just running, okay? All right, so if you lost what I'm saying, I'm sorry, it was a very rush. All of the information is in this slide. If you go step by step, you won't miss anything. You should be able to replicate it exactly the same as what I'm doing so far, okay? So that's everything of the trying. And then um, I probably don't have time to review what happened but I can quickly show you very, very quickly. Um, so the example uh, outputs is the one that I'm going to show you. So if you right click, open the terminals here and type in exactly the same things as before, uh, module load, M12, now lab, it's 18, 2018 or seven, and uh, that. it's loading. So I timed myself this morning. So the pre-processing takes about 10 minutes per person. Okay, so again, because I opened a new MATLAB, I have to do the add pass again, so. In folder and uh, it's in the script call open close no um, I'm just gonna start running and then we can load it. So again with everyone I have already put the output folders and then the input data for this output folders and then the script. Uh, sorry, the, the Kong toolbox or in the folders. So if you followed the slides, you should be exactly get into all of the steps that have been, I'm showing you now. So now I'm loading uh, the demo output, which is this file. Uh, I think what it's talking about is, if you're looking at the parallel folder, they have all of the results is actually in there. Like the QA record is sitting here second level analysis. Um, if you know a little bit of SPM, you will see everything is organized perfectly in here. So sometimes you can just never get a folder to get all of the answers. But the, here is the, the, if you run through a project, this is what it looks like of the whole project. So all of the tabs on here is all red. You can click around and you can get all of this information. Um, so the last, so previously, when we say trying to run the pre-processing, it's this step and you click done and you'll be able to go to the denoising part 
which is to further detrending and get rid of global signal, etc. And after you set up, you click done, it will get into the analysis, which is to generate uh, feed-based analysis, uh, connect functional connectome analysis. And if you want more analysis, you click the plus and you can have a more analysis that you want, like the P, uh, uh, the, physio, uh, the, the PPI analysis and then the uh, ICA, um, yeah, ICC, so uh, ALFF. So all of this is just added on. And then it's, there's some little things you can uh, manipulate the, the config and they can run. And then you come into the, the last part is the result, which is the um, uh, second level steps. And if you have a more analysis, here is you can toggle around just different type of analysis and you want to click to do the, uh, um, um, the, the steps on a different um, measurements in the first level. So for example, seed-based analysis, I already showed uh, people that before in the uh, highlight sessions. Um, so for example, here you can select different seed um, and then you can just click the results and you can run. If it hasn't been, if this results not completed yet, you click compute results and it will run in about a couple of seconds. So if you're interested in the connectome analysis, function connectome analysis, uh, here is the, um, uh, the output. So you can display the results and I will switch as I showed. Oops. I showed here before, you can actually get really nice views of the connectome differences. Yep, and you can have this plot. And the very important and interesting things I didn't show in the um, highlight session last week is this. So you can do the any graphic theory results. So you can calculate all of the uh, measurements for graphic theory and then they can do the stats for you easily. Um, if you know a little bit of the network, personally, the network analysis, first you need to define the network, say, I want the network of, of all of the RIs, or you can even select some of the region and you can customize your own node. Um, and then you can select some of the uh, uh, threshold, say, make it a little bit 0.25 in terms of the cost, value of the cost uh, and then that will reduce uh, the complexity of my current network and then within this network once i define a network i can check all of um, the measurements for the different networks remember we defined group one and group two in this uh, particularly to n equal to 10 uh, samples and they can tell you are they significant difference? So that's the p-values you want to know. Uh, of course, because of the, we just do a random sample, there's nothing significant. If it is, and we tell you, is it survived after the uh, FDR correction? Um, yeah. So just really a matter of, uh, because of the time, so I couldn't um, go through everything into detail. Um, yeah, but um, if you follow the slides that I shared with everyone, you will be able to um, well, uh, just follow all of the steps all the way to the end. And also, if you have any questions, you're welcome to uh, email me or Sarah. Uh, we can help you with it. Uh, finally, I thank everyone who has helped uh, to make this um, the ACCS workshop happen. And um, thank you everyone's hard work. And also, I have this QR code here or the um, the URL of the YouTube that's linked to our channels. So most of our um, talk has been recorded and is available on YouTube. And our slides um, are usually available on the uh, OFC's website. It's in here. Oh, oh it's a, sorry, there's no spell. But this, if you click on the buttons, you will link to the, uh, uh, to, uh, the website. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything um I'll, I'll stop down here thank you Chao. Uh, there were just a, a couple of questions oh yes in the q a if you can just read it and then answer that quickly if you can thank you yeah so you please write in the chat yeah the version numbers of a call uh 
just many bucks, the version of Kong that you use, for example. Yes, yes. Yeah, so um, I, I, I'll I check exactly the numbers, um, but I think so far is, oh, it, it is here. It's version 20B is the one I use. So actually there is probably latest versions that you're welcome just to download them and try. Um, two questions, two questions on that already. So if you, if you can refer me the online tutorial, uh, would it be great how to run Kong with free surfer isolation? Yes, yes. How to run Kong on output of FMI prep. I think this, this, this two questions is really good. Um, I can't give you the answer now, especially we are out of time, but Aaron, we can get in touch um, later this week or early next week. Um, happy to talk with you and I can keep updated because we were also talk, thinking of, about uh, later on using FMI prep to completely run the pre-processing and use Kong, take advantage of uh, the network analysis and then post-processing to run the rest of the analysis. So definitely we can keep in touch with that and work together. All right, thank you, Chao. I think it's time to wrap up this um, session. Thank you to our speakers for great presentation. And thank you um, to our attendees to attend this webinar. Um, we look forward to see you in the next event. And thank you, Jay and Flip, for the tech support. Um, thank you very much. Um, I look forward to see you in the next um, few events in the future. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.